Hello and welcome back to GM Details. Now, a few of your regular viewers will no doubt remember this car. This is the Jaguar XF R Sport Edition Estate that was on the channel around about October for a winter prep video. And I've got it back. So, just a reminder as to how the car actually left back in October before winter was this really glossy, absolutely pristine looking absolutely gorgeous and it's came back like this <laughs> so call it what you like disaster detail let's get into it so the interior isn't too bad just remove the floor mats give it a vacuum up clean the pedals leather steering wheel give that a clean with some leather repair company leather cleaner in the back general vacuum again little clean up of the plastic uh, sills and again another vacuum and leather clean of the seats not too bad and in the boot just a quick vacuum out of this area as well and here's today's chosen chemicals from garage therapy some you'll recognize some brand new Now there's something I've always been meaning to show you guys on the channel, something that I do for my wheel arches. These little brushes, I think a couple of pounds from B&M, is a brush with the hose connection on the end of it. Now it streams continually when you connect it up, it's not got a tap on it or anything like that. But I find these incredibly useful for doing wheel arches with. I just find it an absolutely fantastic way of loosening all the dirt and grit and sand that gets trapped in these areas. Having the brush just allows the agitation and loosens and then later on of course you can go back in with your jet wash. So in the wash bucket today we're going to use Garage Therapy One Wheel Shampoo and for the tyres Auto Glands Rebound. So 30 millilitres goes in the bucket because they haven't been cleaned for months light cleaning duties you can get away with around 20 millilitres. And it's also my first time using the new SGCB wheel woolly type brushes as well. Now this is a tough job for any shampoo. Uh, the wheels do look quite clean as they are now but they're covered in contaminants and tar they just don't seem to build up too, too much with uh, brake dust which can only be a good thing can't it? So after a good rinse we're going in with the IK Foamer and we put 10 milliliters in there and topped it up to 800 mil and that gives a really good spray for about 20 or 30 seconds just enough to coat the wheel it just helps in the way a snow foam does just dwells and helps to loosen the dirt so we're in here with the bucket and getting stuck into the barrel straight away with the SGCB wheel wheelie brush. Now the first time using this and when you pick up the brush initially it doesn't have carry some amount of product with it but even on this Jaguar here it can't get behind the calipers it's just the, the sort of carpet like fibres are just that little bit far too thick to allow it to slide in behind. The EZ brush and doesn't have any trouble with it whatsoever but these brushes just seem that little bit too thick. You need to have a big wheel, a 22 inch Range Rover wheel, no trouble with them whatsoever and then around the rest of the barrel with any car, no trouble whatsoever but just getting in behind calipers you either need to roll your car forward and do the wheels or go with an EZ brush. Now the EZ brushes obviously they'll have a little bit more bristles so you've got to weigh up whether the scratching versus the microfiber you've got to weigh that up to whatever suits your type of wheel. And after I tickle round the nuts with the brush, I'm going to test the wheel shampoo to see how good it is at cleaning tyres. I'm just using that brush, it spreads the foam around and it's still quite white and expected a little bit more brown to come off it. We might just need a brush with a little bit more bite about it. This is the Tough Shine Tyre Brush. 
It's only about £3.50 uh, from County Detail and Supplies. As usual, I'll put a link in it below for you. But look what's happening now. Just with using the one wheel shampoo, it's able now to get something out of the tyres, turn them a bit brown. Now, has it done enough? Let's test it with Autoglans Rebound and see if we can get any more dirt from the tyre. Two squirts is all you need. I'm working in with the Tough Shine brush. Now, I'm actually very surprised at that. Um, I thought there would be more brown coming from the tyre by using the Rebound, because after all, it is a higher alkaline uh, cleaner. It just goes to show that the Garage Therapy One Wheel Shampoo is actually quite a competent tyre cleaner as well. So we'll just go in for a wee quick look and you can already see there's some tar still in the barrels but the faces of the wheels and the tyres just look incredibly clean. Now we haven't used anything other than one wheel shampoo here. On to the front wheel now and I'll speed up the process here. At this point I've sacked off the SGCB brush and we're onto the EZ wheel brush and you can see here just look how much easier it is. With having the foam on there from the IK foamer you don't need as much product on the brush so the brush works absolutely perfectly, gets in behind those calipers and cleans the entire barrel. There's a little bit more contamination on these being the front wheels. So I'm going to use Garage Therapy's new iron oxide fallout remover, which can also be doubled as a wheel cleaner on its own. Now with this product being a little bit thicker, it's just a little bit harder to get it out of the bottle. So a little bit more squeezing power of the trigger is required. Now this is the first mistake I made with using the product, spraying it on and then agitating it straight away. Looks great, looks lovely and lubricated, but what I'm doing here is activating the surfactants inside because iron oxide has zero decon shampoo mixed in with it. So what I'm doing here is actually activating the zero decon and it's kind of diluting the theoglycolic acid that's in it. So I'm sort of neutralizing it slightly. So everybody makes mistakes and Gaz, eh, Gaz, Maz, I nearly said Gaz from Marriage Therapy there, that's <laughs> an entirely different thing, but he said to let it dwell before agitation. <laughs> so who else has used a fallout remover for a tyre cleaner? Boom! Head explosion. So, uh, well you can see from the Zero Decon shampoo that's in it, it makes a really really good tyre cleaner. Just get the tough shine brush on it and browns up really well, cleans it perfectly. Now are you all waiting to see what the reaction's like? Let's go in for a look. Plenty of cleaning power, obviously from the, the Zero Decon shampoo in it, but I mean, oh, we have used the one wheel shampoo. There's a little tiny bit of reaction around the nuts. Other than that, mm, can't see any reaction at all. So whether or not one wheel shampoo has done its job, removed all that, or have I just made iron oxide ineffective? I'm sure Garage Therapy will let us know below in the comments. Round two with iron oxide. I'm going to use it now on an uncleaned wheel. So we're just going to spray it directly over the dirt. Let's see what happens. We're going to let it dwell this time as well.
A few moments later. So I'm quite surprised that after a few minutes that there isn't any reaction to speak of. It hasn't lit up. Although the brake disc just behind, you won't be able to see it, but the brake disc has reacted. So obviously that's iron that's going to react quite quickly. So either that there's absolutely no fallout or very little fallout on the wheel itself, or in fact that because of the lower temperatures, the cold may have caused the decon surfactants to massively slow down the reaction. Possibly. I know it's not a fault of the product because I used it on my own car a few days later and that reacted just as normal and uh, cleaned up the ceramic coating absolutely perfectly. So just must be something to do with these wheels. Now in all my videos I'm a great believer of pre-rinsing before you use any chemicals to remove all of the loose dirt and dust. As you can see from the side of the car here there's also a lot of salt deposits. Now before you use chemicals it's a highly controversial subject split 50-50 between pe people using a chemical straight away or a pre-rinse. Entirely up to yourself what you want to do whatever works best for you I just feel that I don't want to put a chemical on a dirty car. I want to have the car as clean as possible just using water before I start using chemicals because then those chemicals can start to work on what you can't see on the car. I think that's more important. It also helps to lower the temperature of the panels, on, especially on a darker colored car. It helps to prevent chemicals baking on to the panels instantly. Anyway, let's finish the rinsing. So we're going to use 50ml of Zero Decon shampoo in a sprayer before we put on the put it on as a foam. And we'll use that in about 800 millilitres of warm water just to see what it does. I'm going to put another 50 ml in the MGGC Foam Cannon Pro. Top it up with 400 ml of warm water. Okay, so we're going to end up using 100 millilitres in total of the Zero Decon shampoo. That's over two pounds worth of chemical, and some might say that's just a little bit extreme. You could maybe just, why can't you just use the, the pre-wash or just use it as a snow foam? Okay, so if it was your own car, you would have a rough idea of the level of protection that's on the car, and you could adjust it. You could either use a sprayer or you could use it in a foam. I'm using both just to give it a double hit of the chemical just to try and very quickly remove any remaining waxes or sealants that's on the car and uh, who knows it could remove quite a bit of the contamination as well and save me money on the likes of tar remover or fallout remover. moments later. Now I'm really getting caught out with the sun here so it's very important I get this foam off before it dries in. It already looks as though it's dried but it just means that it's dwelled after a few moments and it's ran down slightly. So it's very important very quickly to get this off the car so it doesn't drive. Drive? Dry! Now 
one of my top five favorite shampoos is Garage Therapy One Car Shampoo. And I'm gonna use this with my new prize win from Anakem Automotive from Northern Ireland and see how it is. I've never used a microfiber wash mitt before. It's always been the noodle mitts. So my noodle mitt has now been resigned for the lower parts of the car. There you are. The shampoo just has everything for me. It's got plenty of suds. It's very well lubricated and the cleaning power is excellent as well. As an added bonus on top of that, it smells amazing. It's probably one of the most economical shampoos that you can use on the market. 20 ml in a 20 litre bucket. I'm using about 18 litres of water. Works out about 40 pence per wash because the, bottle, the 500 ml bottle costs about 10 pounds, give or take. It certainly is an exceptionally good shampoo to use. Now, I'm only washing the top half here, as I've explained in previous videos. Here we have the chenille wash mitt, which I'm using on the lower half of the car. Now, normally I would go around the entire top half of the car first, side to side, but because of the, the, the sunlight being on the car, I'm concerned about the panel temperatures of the car and obviously indirect sunlight leaving shampoo on with the possibility of the shampoo drying. Now it's not anywhere near it at the moment but just to show you and to demonstrate why you would use two wash mitts you don't want to have a good wash mitt cleaning the bottom of the car and then going back to the top because then you could uh, pick up some dirt or grip on your mitt and then possibly swirl that in and cause swirl marks in your car. Of course that's just my system if you want to use more mitts than that it's entirely up to yourself now rinsing off especially with the garish therapy one shampoo it's a no residue shampoo it's a pure shampoo so you can either use a pressure washer or you can use a garden hose whichever you prefer now i'm really liking this microfiber wash mitt it's you, you actually feel more in contact with what the shampoo is doing you can feel a, a better slickness if that makes sense um, it, it just glides effortlessly across the paint really really like it i think that'll be my new top half of the car wash media from now on The first stage of the chemical decontamination process is removing tar. That's kicked up from the tyres, so you'll get more concentrated areas on the rear bumper, around the wheel arches, and in particular behind the front wheels. So what I do is I take a cheap microfiber cloth that I don't mind throwing away, because these aren't worth washing, and just I apply some tar remover onto the cloth, and just wipe and see if you can see anything coming off. Now you will get a kind of residue left behind, that's the emulsions that allow it to be rinsed off. But a rinse I feel isn't enough, there's always something else left behind. I always give either a snow fo an extra snow foam or uh, if there's any shampoo left in the bucket, I'll go back over it again with some shampoo just to get rid of as much as I possibly can. To try to find a tar spot on a black car is like trying to find a tax return for Amazon. But if you want to know, there's one there on the wheel. We'll get to that later. A little later. So after going around the whole car, the only thing I could find was this little bit on the barrel to take off. A little bit on the cloth. Quick rub. And bingo. It's gone. The warm panels, direct sunlight and fallout removers are a recipe for disaster. You can easily get caught out with the fallout remover baking on to the side of the car and being really difficult to remove. So I'm just going to do a couple of panels here. I'm not going to let it dwell too long and I'm just going to go straight in with the clay mitt without rinsing off first. 
that's one massive benefit with iron oxide having the zero decon shampoo infused in it it gives you a little bit longer dwell time but again on these sunny conditions i don't think there's really very much to, that will help prevent any fallout remover from drying but the benefit of having zero decon in it is it makes a fantastic lubricant for clay work then a very quick top to bottom rinse before moving on to the shaded side. So you may have seen from my Instagram that I have a new drying towel from the leather repair company. It's called the Gold Member and it's a 1400 GSM towel priced at just over £10. Fantastic value for money. Now the drying towel works best if you just slightly dampen it and the best way I found to do this is to actually dry your windows first. Camera's just in the way there. <laughs> just dry your windows, gets the fibres just that little bit damp and allows you then to be able to dry up the clear coat of the car with absolute ease. sunlight obviously helping it there but you can just see any dribbles of water that's on the car just effortlessly removed it's a fantastic drying towel out of stock at the moment though hopefully it won't be too long before they're back in stock <laughs> 